Hi and uh, welcome to our latest Birding Insights vlog. Um, thank you for tuning in, I'm Ashley Saunders and uh, it's back to geese again this episode. Um, Nick and I both wanted to share with you some of our, our goosing highlights from the winter so far. Uh, we're aware some of you are, are back home there, probably wishing you could get out in the field with us again um, and enjoy the spect spectacle for yourselves. But um, in the meantime, um, we thought we'd uh, bring you uh, virtually some of the highlights of the goose in season um, and we hope you enjoy it. Um, do take a look at the end of the vlog uh, on the website. We've still got some day trips coming up in the winter period ahead um, where you can come and see some of these sites for yourselves. Um, so in the meantime, enjoy the vlog and thanks for tuning in. Well, no better place to start than uh down here at Holcomb Lady Anne's Drive. It's a uh, full moon on at the moment, and that means lots of pink-footed geese rest in here really close to the drive. So these are birds I'll be feeding at night and just resting up during the day. You can see lots of s sleeping and preening going on, bit of feeding as well. Oh, there's a bit of a skirmish there. So yeah, really great opportunity to see the birds up really close, um, study the plumage and you can see the dark head contrasting with the paler chest there, which is so diagnostic at a greater distance, and blackish bill with varying amounts of, of pink markings on the bill. Um, but also, good chance to see the differences between adults and youngsters. You've got you know, this gander at the front here, he's barking away at the moment. He's probably got some young close by, he's just keeping an eye on them. And they'll stay together as a family unit in the flock all through the winter. Um, and the ganders especially will defend their little space in the in the flock against incomers. So yeah, really nice opportunity to see the birds up close, nice and relaxed. They're used to people here but at Lady Anne's Drive. So the piece is about to be shattered here by an incoming group of pink feet from above. XAC there, the net, net collared gander. He's just going mad. His mate's joining in as well. Lots of head bowing and aggressive posture in there. He really didn't like those birds dropping in and invading his space. He's defending his family. Um, really cool to see that. Uh, XAC we know quite well actually. He's um, a bird that was net collared um, by the Wildfowl and Wetlands Trust up at Kelling back in 2018. Last seen at Heacham last winter. And uh, this is the first time I've seen him this year. And his mate's here too. She's got a satellite collar on. Um, so yeah. Good to see uh, old, familiar faces amongst the flock. So you probably noticed uh, in my intro earlier that I was standing in front of a massive uh, pile of sugar beet. It's called a clamp. Um, and oh, I'm just going to be uh, rudely interrupted actually by some pink feet coming over. You'll probably hear them shortly. Um, but yeah, the sugar beet here, I'm standing in front of a field uh, that's recently been harvested. Um, this is one of the main food sources, of course, uh, for our pink-footed geese returning here each winter. Um, it's a really key food source. Obviously, safe feeding and roosting sites are, are key for the birds, um, but the reliable food source is, is probably one of the most important things. And uh, sugar beet traditionally have been that. Um, the beet harvester, when it comes through the field, um, takes the green tops off um, along with a little bit of the, the beet itself. That gets left behind, you can see behind me there in the field, that's a typical uh, field of beet tops that the geese would be uh, coming on hopefully in the next few days to feed on. This is very recently harvested um, and it's actually those those bits of the, the sugar beet tops that are attached to the green that chopped off by the harvester that the birds like to feed on. Um, we are seeing some, some changes though um, to the agricultural practices out here, particularly out here in West Norfolk. Um, whereby these fields of beet tops that are so key to the birds being ploughed in really quickly. Often the drill is in the field the same day as the harvester um, and of course that's causing some issues for the geese, um, less safe feeding sites for them and then of course uh, it causes the birds to look for alternative food sources which we'll, we'll look at later in the vlog but um, yeah so we are seeing a change. It's making it harder to pin the birds down as a lot of these fields get turned in really quickly. Uh, but I'm hoping this one here uh, is gonna stay like this for a, a good few days, maybe a week or so, and there'll be lots of good feed in here, and we can come back and hopefully show you some geese. So two days on, um, back at the same field, and uh, here we go, the geese have found it. Uh, fantastic sight, the light's brilliant. 
and uh, got about 8,000 birds here this morning. So it's really, really spectacular. Um, really important when you're watching these birds to, to make sure that you're not disturbing them anyway, in any way. As I say, the feeding opportunities are quite limited and the last thing you want to be doing is is putting the birds up. So always try and view from the, the vehicle if you can or if you stand outside, make sure you stand against your vehicle or against a hedge um, so you're not skylined and you don't, don't upset the birds. You can see they're feeding away happily there. Fantastic sight. Really great to get a flock on the deck um, early in the day and uh, see what's with them. So a nice bonus here are these two barnacle geese. Um, it's actually uh, an adult, the larger bird on the right, which I'm guessing is a gander, uh, and a young first winter bird on the left, which you can see is clearly smaller with sort of really buffy, sort of softly textured flanks, well barred on the coverts and with a black stripe sort of running back from the eye that joins onto the black on the back of the neck. But really cool to see them up so close. You can see the, the young birds actually paler on the back as well. Really nice. And now for something a bit more subtle. Um, at the right hand side of the shot at the front there, facing away from us, there's a young white front. You can see it's got a dark tail, but with a really narrow white uh, tip to it compared to a pink foot. Um, just turning to the left now, these young white fronts are often quite dinky little things, but you can see it's quite smooth brown on the back. It doesn't have all that sort of silvery scaling of a pink foot. Um, and with a neat white tips to the greater coverts forming a slight bar. It's now over to the sort of left hand side of the shot. You can see it's got orangey legs as well and a completely pink bill, which is unlike a pink foot. And with that dark feathering just frame in the base of the bill. Um, really lovely birds, really subtle. So here we are a little bit later on in the morning. Uh, light's a little bit harsher now, but the birds are really relaxed and creeping up to me as I'm sitting here watching. So now I've got birds really quite close and you can just see Billy No Mates in the middle there walking towards us. A uh, fantastic tundra bean goose. Uh, always a nice reward um, when you're sifting through the pinks to drop onto one of these. Um, just see him with his head down uh, towards the, the front of the shot there on his own on the left of that group of four birds, just facing to the left now. See, his orange legs um, are obviously pretty striking in this, this light, but a darker bird as well, much darker, more chocolatey brown tones on the upper parts, doesn't have that frosty sort of bluey gray sheen that a lot of the adult pink feet have. And a gangly bird as well, you can see him walking right there, really long legged and a pretty wedge shaped head and deep based bill, uh, which is typical of the, of the Rossicus race or the tundra bean goose and now everything's just suddenly become alert you can see heads and necks have all gone up and an agricultural vehicle's just making its way along the back of the field and the birds are, are super nervous i think they're probably going to fly you can see the tundra bean uh, standing at right at the front here so a super view of him nice view of his bill as well mainly black with just a restricted orange band um, across the, the sort of outer part of the bill. Again, typical of the, the tundra race, but yeah, I think they think the birds are gonna move off now. Here they go. Wow, always a spectacular sight. So we spoke at the beginning about uh, different food sources for the pinks and maize uh, stubble has become a bit of a lifeline, to be honest, uh, this year for the birds and you can see uh, lots of voracious feeding and interaction going on here, really busy. Uh, loads of waste here, the, the, the maize is harvested mainly for biofuel, going into biodigesters, but yeah, loads of, loads of corn cobs dropped to the floor during the harvest, and actually brilliant to see birds even wandering around with whole corn cobs in their bills. Um, but yeah, the maize is, is a real lifesaver, and wonderful light this morning for watching the birds feeding. And of course, uh, one of the byproducts of having to sit really still and quiet in the van for long periods is uh, other wildlife, of course, like this brown hair. Pop back to the maze again this morning, a different day, really windy, uh, rain on the way, but I'm glad I've called in. There's a lovely party of white fronts have appeared here. A uh, young bird on the left there and two adults on the right. 
Well, I've managed to find the, the beet field where the birds are feeding, and wow, what a sight. Got around seven or 8,000 birds here already, and as you can see, little groups dropping in all the time uh, from the north. You can see them coming, turning into the wind to land, and uh, so a job on now to uh, get scanning. And with more birds coming in all the time, it's sort of scanning the arriving flocks to see if you can pick out anything obvious, like a snow goose or... Uh, anything really, listening for calls as well, sometimes you hear the white fronts yapping as they come in um, but it's really exciting when you've got birds piling in like this So late afternoon now and the mist sort of starting to roll in but what a moment for Nick who's just pulled this cracking uh, vagrant Canada goose out of the throng as a just reward for four or five hours ploughing through this, this group um, and yeah, I mean, wow, spine tingling moment of dropping on this in the flock. Um, so this will be a form interior, also known as a Todd's Canada goose. So not especially small, um, quite a big, bulky, large bodied bird, but with a little snaky neck. I always think the neck um, looks a bit too small for the body. And uh, yeah, wow, just totally unexpected. Uh, and I guess probably the bird that was in Lancashire recently. And uh, some more of the Todds here, you can see uh, often at times with the neck stretched up, can look quite big, but often the neck looks all snaky, as I say, almost like a hoover pipe sort of hanging off the front of the body. The body looks too big for the neck size. And uh, this bird's actually got a really broad black, what's called a gula stripe under the chin that sort of bisects the white cheek patch. That's a typical feature of these vagrant birds. And um, as well, not as sort of silvery chested as a, a, a feral bird this, this one's actually got a really nice sort of honey coloured wash over the breast a really lovely bird and a, a great moment so back up near Wells in North Norfolk to finish off our goose vlog and uh, this group are feeding on looks like a ploughed field it's actually a recently drilled beet field and you can see the beet uh, actually sticking out through the, the tilled earth there that's what the birds are feeding on uh, lights fading just picked out a young white front but uh, really just enjoying the spectacle and now it's just a matter of uh, waiting for the last embers of the day and uh, we should see these birds flying off to their roost so thanks for tuning in